don't step up to the fight Playing with powers they don't understand Will they fuck it all up or will they save the land? Treachery, vanity, loitering and worse Combined, a group of fantasy authors take on a sadistic games master. Will they survive? Open your big wet mind and accept the adventure. Authors and dragons! Authors and dragons! Hi everybody, I'm John Hartness and I'll be playing the role of Fandingo the Fantastical. Battle-hardened bard. In real life, I write a whole bunch of different stuff, including histories, a Quincy Harker Demon Hunter short story collection, which will be coming out at the end of this month. So you can follow me wherever I talk and pre-order that shit. Hi, I'm Joseph Brassi, author of uh, Skyfarer and Dragon Road from Angry Robot Books. Uh, I play the role of Bjorg Bjornsson, enthusiastic and violent, positive masculinity barbarian. Um, and I am also uh, a blathering, irritated live blog monster who is currently swearing his face off at Facebook. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Walteri and I am the man behind the mask, a.k.a. the mysterious Arrow of the Gods also known as Silas Kane, a paladin slash former paladin of God I Cannot Say. In real life, I write uh, several books and series, but uh, my most recent, uh, by the time you're listening to this, the Beyond Midnight anthology will be out, and uh, in it I have a story called Hellbent, which is a mini-sequel to uh, my recently released novel, Get Bent. Hi there, my name's Steve Weprel, and I play Brandon Fymaster, monk and rugmaster. In real life, I write a comedy fantasy series, Doomsayer Journeys, and I am also appearing in the Beyond Midnight anthology, so that's an extra reason to check that out. Hey there, I am Drew Hayes, GM of this ambling shit circus, joined, of course, by Silent Vin Diesel, who is back from his summer break trip. He runs a summer camp. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. It would be probably more effective if he could talk, but, you know, he does his best. Gotta save the voice for all those I am Groots. Anyway... Uh, in regular life, I write books such as Fred the Vampire Accountant, NPCs, and Superpowers, the latest of which, Year 4, has released in audio as well as ebook and hardback. There are no paperbacks because I cannot get a printer who can do a paperback of that size. When last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had uh, barely managed to defeat some furniture. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> I did. It just sounds like a Saturday night. Hmm. Wait, what's wrong with Klaus? <laughs> oh shit, Klaus is unconscious. Uh, Klaus has rushed over to the work table, and uh, seeing something in a mug that looks kind of like an ale mug, <laughs> swigs it down immediately, and falls over, cracking his head on the chair and passing out into a deep, deep slumber. Uh, one of you will have to drag him from room to room from henceforth. The arrow of the gods will go and grab him by his uh, dick pants and dr and gl gladly drag him uh, face first through the muck. I think he shed the dick pants. Also, there is no muck. You're in a nice like ro room. Not yet. You can find some muck. Fine. If if I can't grab him by drag him by his dick pants, I will drag him by his dick. <laughs> okay, you <laughs> grab Klaus's dick while he's unconscious. God um, damn it again! Not a not a great move for a paladin. I'm not gonna uh, lie, I'm, but I'm the arrow of the gods, mysterious vigilante. Uh, okay, not a great move for a masked person either. Oh come on, Batman uh, does this shit all the time. Serial killers wear masks as Batman, well as heroes, you know. Batman reaches into men's pants while they're unconscious and grabs hold of their penis all the time. Yeah, that, that, yeah I, I think that was, that's that, a thing. That was that was, that was issue like 497 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Stay back, Robin. I've got this. <laughs> so, who is anybody really badly injured? Um, let me check here. Let's see if Bjorg's Klaus isn't looking great. I'll go ahead and tell you that. <laughs> Don't really give a fuck. He's asleep. Bjorg is at fifty-six out of seventy-two. I think. 
Bjork has more hit points than I start with. Arrow of the Gods is at 10 out of 53. Wonder Fly Mass is at 22. I would like to take this moment to remind you, gentlemen, as you learn in the previous game, that you do have the capability of healing yourselves using your hit die. Yep, I'm definitely going to do that. Okay. As we take, we need to take a short rest to do that, right? Yes. But seeing as you are in a secured room and you've killed all the dangerous furniture, uh, it's probably a pretty good place to, to hunker down for a bit. Yeah, and I'll be, as we're doing our our rest, I'll also play a little Sleepy Time song and everyone will regain an extra 1d6. Hey, Bjorg's head okay, points are back go. up to 69. Wink, wink. Nice. Fandango will regain 12 to get back to 30. Okay, with Fandango's bonus and the rest of my hit die sacrifice, that's Brandon Firemaster back up to 42 hit points. Fandango will gain back 26, and that'll take him to 44. Okay. And I get back all my bardic inspiration. You are all slowly mm. learning the mechanics for 5e. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I rolled like shit. I got 26 back too, but I was at 10. So I'm going to use the rest of my lay on hands of myself to bring myself up to 46. Alrighty, Arrow of the Gods, you definitely use lay on hands on yourself. <laughs> anyone uh, anyone with a Knowledge Arcana can go ahead and roll me a Knowledge Arcana. Bjorg is going to look at, uh, at, at the Arrow of the Gods as this happens and goes... Do you do that to yourself often? It's it's weird to do that in front of other people. Fendingo rolls a 12 for knowledge Yeah, you've, you've seen Silas use lay on hands before, so you know what it looks like. I'm not saying this is Silas, I'm just saying this gentleman has lay on hands. Huh. Not necessarily. You see, when you touch a hero, it's just inspiring. Oh, you're He's masturbating. Right. It has inspired uh, several of his wounds to stop bleeding and seal up. Fendingo's going to walk over and touch the Arrow of the Gods. Fendingo's going to pet Arrow of the Gods on the shoulder gently. See if he gets any mojo. I, I, I am confused. This does not make me feel better. Are, are, you, are you asking if he hits on you? It's really more of a Rick question than a me question. Well, well, uh, you know something? I'm, I'm beginning to doubt, like, you know, Fandingo's uh, dedication as a fan of the Arrow of the Gods. I'm standing here stroking you. How can you doubt my dedication? Makes a good point. Uh, do, is there still sense motive checks in this game? <laughs> Check your skill sheet. There's insight. Yeah. For, fortunately, the Arrow of the Gods has very little insight. <laughs> Well, that is just true on a lot of levels, but also you <laughs> rolled a six, so yes. Uh, I don't really feel any better. I'm going to go over here and look at the table. Is there anything yes. cool? Is there anything cool on the table? There are several cool things on the table. Let's see. Why don't you roll me a perception and see how many stick out to you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fendingo rolls a 21 for perception, so I think everything that can stick out at him is sticking out there, pal. Okay, pallet. roll me Knowledge Arcana. And do better than 12. Okay, 21 is better than 12. I didn't say reverse 12. <laughs> I'm a fucking giver, what can I say? <laughs> All right, uh, Fandango, you have a very productive sweep of the top of the table. Um, you see some equipment that you know could be used in enchanting, like specialized tools. Um, you see a couple of reagents that you recognize as things that are used, again, in enchantment work and spellcrafting. Um, you see a small, like, pot uh, that is extremely... <clears throat> looks new even though everything around here has clearly been gone for a while so enchanted extra durable pot um and yeah you just you see a bunch of interesting shit on this table that puts together okay this person knew a lot about spell work they probably crafted a lot of shit and all these reagents together i could probably get a good 30 gold for these in a good market 
So all of those 30 gold worth of stuff will go right into that bag of holding. You just you just sweep it all <laughs> down oh. into the bag. I'm going to step back a little bit, maybe hold up Klaus in just, front of me you know. as a human shield. <laughs> we'll put the reagents in last. Like a cartoon character eating at a buffet. Just an endless slide. Yep. All right, you have swept off the top of the desk. Uh, Bjorg would look at the desk, but, you know, he's across the room still standing amidst the ruins of the stuff he destroyed. And now he is going to make his way over to the other table that looked like it had food things on it. Um, okay, you can walk over. Roll me perception on the other table. All right, perception on the other table. Rolling, and Bjorg rolls a 21. What the fuck? <laughs> it's a third 21 <laughs> in a row. <laughs> You know, the GM never whines when we roll three ones in a row on our fucking healing, but, you know. It's just creepy. This is shit that gets you thrown out of Vegas. Damn it. Why couldn't it be three 23s in a row? That would be a perfect 69 joke. <laughs> is there an imperfect 69 joke? Uh, This one? Yeah. All right, I was going to say you... not tonight. Bevan's not here. Uh, you see a table that is set with dinnerware, cookery. There are things that might have once been food, but they are so old and decayed that it it's more just like crumbled dust. Uh, this looks like someone tried to eat here once and then forgot about it and then didn't eat here. And now they are gone. And so is whatever was here. Even that would be able to Taco Bell. <laughs> is there anything else around here that looks interesting? Well, wait, isn't isn't this a door? Yes. All right, I will also drag the rest of the desk. I will drag Klaus over to the door. All right. Uh, it is a wooden door. Um, there are metal bands across the top and bottom. Um, and there is a very large, sturdy-looking padlock kind of looped through the core entrance part and it is impressive um roll me a perception actually 13 all right oh double 13 as well <laughs> uh yeah this is not a super hard check it there's a a rune kind of glowing in the center like this is a magic lock it is it is meant to keep motherfuckers out hmm I mean, I, I could I could use like Klaus as a puppet and kind of have him fiddle with the lock, see if I can pick it. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, that that that'll definitely be a thing that's accomplishable somehow. <laughs> if I use his hand, then you know it's kind of like using his skills. Well, we're still yet to debate whether he has any skills. Right now, he's, <laughs> One could he's argue as it... an effective rogue, unconscious as he was conscious. <laughs> one could argue more so because the room doesn't smell like piss mm. Yeah. Mm. I thought there was something strange about this room Fandigo's going to go over to the weapons rack and see if there's anything left on it or if everything attacked us already uh, no everything that was on the weapons rack has flown off you are standing at the other door oh this is another door yes is it locked uh, it is a steel door um, with a solid handle, kind of like built deep into the stone of the tunnel, and uh, you can try it, and it is definitely locked. Hmm. Is there a hole? There's a keyhole. Did I see a key on the other table? Uh, you did not see a key on the top of the desk. You have yet to search any of the drawers. Yes, we're going back over to the desk. Start looking for a key. Okay. Uh, there are three separate drawers. One that is directly under the pot-looking thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then two that are kind of lined up like a standard desk, one on top of the other. All right. I want to go over to the table and get a fork. This sounds like the beginning of a bad idea. This is, I think, less bad than most of my ideas. I will give you that, yes. I'm going to use the, I'm going to stand off to the side and use the fork to open the 
drawer, the one drawer under the pot looking thing. Okay. Um, that one is not locked. Um, so you can kind of pull it open and look around. You see, uh, some quills, you see some, uh, little empty ink pots. Um, one that looks like it had some probably, but the whole thing is just dried and crusted over. Uh, and then you see like some little odds and ends and trinkets, um, like a chip stone that kind of looks like a fish, uh, a glass marble. It, it's, it's sort of the junk drawer. Um, but roll me a knowledge arcana. Uh, Fendigo rolls a 13. Okay. One item does stand out to you. Um, it is a tiny object that looks sort of like a feather. I pick it up. Okay. You are holding a tiny object that looks like a feather. I'll put it in my bag of holding. Alrighty. Tiny object that looks like a feather. Let's see how many episodes it'll take for me to forget that that's in my inventory. I set the line at 0.5. All right, I'll open the top drawer over on the other side the same way, kind of standing off to the side and not um, being directly okay. in front of it. Uh, this one does not come immediately. Uh, if you look a little closer, you can see that there's a lock. God damn it. What about the one underneath it? Is it open? is it locked as well? No, it's, again, sort of think like a modern desk, because that's basically what I'm using. Um, yeah. There's a lock at the top, uh, and you have to get it to pull both open. Balls. Hmm. Uh, all right, I'll pull the little thingy that looks like a feather out and poke it at the lock. Okay. Uh, n- nothing happens. I turn it around and poke the quill end into the lock. N- nope. <laughs> Poop. How sturdy does it? How sturdy does it look? Uh, the desk. Yeah. Looks sturdier than it should. Uh, kind of based on some of the other stuff. But the more you look around, the more you notice the timeline doesn't super add up. And that's all I'm going to give you, unless you give me intelligence checks. Ooh, that sounds like a challenge. Oh yeah, we can fuck those up in a heartbeat. All right. So let's. This is all of us. Yeah. Okay. Power cool. of the gods, sixteen. Fandingo, eighteen. How do I intelligence? Let's see here. You failed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Bjorg rolls a nine, so probably did. Brandon Flymaster also rolls a nine. <laughs> Rather appropriately, uh, the the bard and the paladin are capable of figuring it out. Um, S- superhero. Yeah, Fandingo and Arrow of the Gods both notice that the things in here seem to be sort of aged differently. Like, uh, the the food on the table looks as though it's gone beyond, like, staleness and rot into just nothingness. But the table itself feels like it's a little too new for that. And then the desk looks like an excellent condition, whereas some of the utensils and tools on there look as though they have been aged for decades. But the pot looked new. Pot looked super new. Is there anything in the pot? Uh, you had a twenty-one perception. No, there's nothing in the pot. There was like a thin film of something that looked like it had, oh. uh, it again, sort of like the ink. Like it, there might have been, but it's sort of dried out and just caked by now. I'm gonna drag Klaus over to the table, and uh, tempting as it is to try this with him, I'll grab one of the broken weapons off the floor and put it on the table and see if, like, you know, anything happens, like it starts to tarnish or anything. Uh, how long do you want to wait? Well, while guys are, well, well, people are doing other stuff, I'll just keep an eye on it. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, Fandingo. <sighs> Out of all of the shit that I raked into my bag of holding off the top of the desk, were there any keys? Uh, you did not see any keys. All right. Are the so let's reach back over to the other desk and pull the drawer kind of halfway open because sometimes drawers have that stupid interlocking thing. That undo shit, does it? Nope. Oh, Wait. is there a key? Is there a key maybe taped to the bottom of the drawer of the desk? 
Uh, okay, you can get down and check while you're doing that, Brandon Thymaster. Well, seeing as uh, Rogue is out for the count, I guess I'm going to go uh, check for traps on this magical lock. Please describe for me how Brandon Thymaster <laughs> checks for traps. Well, <laughs> it's just looking at stuff, Drew. So Brandon Thymaster, it can't be that hard. I just I'll say, guys, I'm looking for traps, and then look at the door. <laughs> All right. You are staring at a door and thinking about traps. Nice. Uh, you have okay, a hard time guys. thinking about traps as a construct and not as a muscle group that could always use a good workout. <laughs> Wait, did, did, right. any, did, did we ever did we check like, you know, the broken uh, armor like armor sets? Nope. Like Bjorg, Bjorg, maybe you want to check those. Maybe uh, maybe the one that was uh, kind of calling the shots has a key on them. Bjorg is going to go and check the armor set. Uh, armor. Okay. He looks down at the broken armor and says, do you have a key? Roll, roll me perception. The armor does all not right. speak back. You all destroyed it. That's, I know. You see, so you're just searching the wreckage, basically. Uh, Bjorg rolls a five for perception. Yeah. Yeah, the, you do not find the key. You literally just asked an inanimate object, do you have a key? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Where is it? It's at least as helpful as asking one of us. Uh, Fandango, there is no key under the uh, desk. <sighs> the, the, the Arrow of the Gods will go and try to look through the armor that uh, Bjorg commanded. <laughs> All right. Give me a perception. Thirteen. All right, you also do not find a key. But when you look back to the table at the sword, it has remained unchanged. Curious. <laughs> Indeed. Not that curious. You put a thing on the table, it's still on the table. I'd say it's the opposite of curious. <laughs> okay, uh... I, oh God, I can't believe... I'm going to have to, to say this, but do y'all need an intelligence check? <laughs> um, Fandango's going to kick the desk, like on the side of the <laughs> the side where the drawer is. Okay. I don't need an intelligence check. Kick. <laughs> right. Roll me, uh, roll me a strength check. Or are you, like, really trying to kick this motherfucker? No, I'm just kind of thumping it to see if I can knock the drawer loose. Uh, Fandango rolls a 17. Uh, 17, you hit it pretty hard and you put a slight crack in it by accident. Um, really? Which, yeah, just like a little, little like chip in the wood. Um, hey, Jorg. Yeah. Come make a hole. In what? And how deep? Desk. This is, this is, this is a complex science, really. I mean, making yeah, that a was... hole, you have to understand the structure of the thing and its composition. Open the and... fucking desk. Okay, you want me to just break it? Yep. Okay. That was going to be the intelligence check where she goes to realize it's just a desk. Well, Bjorg will go over to where Fendingo is. All right. Yeah. Should I just attack it? Uh, depends. If you want to, like, just grab the uh, drawer and just try and, like, rip it open, like, just bust the fucking lock clean through, that's a strength check. If you want to hack into it with a sword or, like, try and kick it, those are attacks. Uh, the risk is you'll definitely get in uh, with attacks pretty quick, but you risk destroying anything inside. All right, well, he's going to do a strength check. Okay. Fendi All right, here we go. Back. Bjorg is just going to haul <laughs> off and roll a natural 20, uh, so he's going to elbow drop that thing. <laughs> Bjorg, you have no idea what Fandango is talking about. This wasn't locked. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's really simple. I mean, actually, if you look at it, all you need to do is use your elbow. You effortlessly pull it open um, as the rest watches the lock shatter beneath the might of Bjorg with a nat 20, uh, keeping it all completely intact. I mean, honestly, if you look at it, I mean, this this is how you unlock it. It's very simple. It's just that I don't know what that decorative thing was. Seems fair. This is how we lock. This is how you lock things in the north, right? <clears throat> yes, yes. Okay. What's in the drawer? Uh, in the top drawer, you find a leather-bound journal, as well as a pair of keys. Hey! 
One simple and steel, one with a slight glow on top. What's in the bottom drawer? Uh, Do I have to break that one too? No, no, you. It was one lock, so you only had to had to oh. do that, and you you nat twenty, so well done. I no longer know what to do with myself. Uh, well, you can roll a perception with Fandango since you're right there. Oh, yeah. Fandango, give me a perception. Uh, Fandango rolls a nineteen, and Bjorg rolls a five. Well done. Uh, I don't know what's in here. Apparently, some some things. Useful for uh, something, I'm sure. Let's see. Okay, so, uh, Fandango, what you see are um, stacks of, like, documents and pages and uh, scripts, basically. It, it looked like, they look like research notes, functionally. It looks like someone was conducting experiments here, and they kept just a shitload of research notes. But with Bjorn kicking in, I'm going to count that as him assisting you on the skill check. <clears throat> And uh, together, the two of you happen to notice that they're all, the kick you delivered knocked something on the bottom a little bit out of wonk. And so you can look, peer down and see, oh, false bottom. Mm. What's under there? We'll put all the, I'll put the keys in the pocket. I'll put the journal and the shitload of research notes in my bag of holding. And now what's in the false bottom? Uh, you find a flat iron rod with a button on one end, and then you also find a wand um, with sort of a rainbow effect kind of just rippling across, um, almost more like an oil slick sheen than a pure rainbow. It's just this endless, unnatural swirl of, uh, of appearances and colors. You may roll me a Knowledge Arcana check on both of them to see if you recognize them. All right. Uh, one check or two? Uh, one for each. All Give right. Me, uh, we'll do them in order that you found them. So the flat iron rod with the button first. Flat iron rod is a natural one. It looks no like a fucking idea. It's a stick. It could be a rod of destroy the world for all you know. <laughs> yeah, baby. Roll it, roll it. My God, two <laughs> wands of destroy the world. This son of a bitch was planning to detonate reality. <laughs> All right, Bending is going to very carefully put the wands of destroy the world in his bag of holding. You, you, you know something? <laughs> he he should roll roll again because if you get a third one in a row, you commit suicide out of fear of the wand. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of do want one more roll from you, John. It can be a d20 or whatever, but let's just see if the dice are against you today. They are not, because on my third d20, I rolled a 9. Okay, you don't want to ask anyone else if they would like to look at the rods and roll a check? Well, my... No hey, one wants guys, to look at your rod, Fred. Rods. I found these rods. I think they're going to destroy the world. What should we... Do you guys think... What do you guys think? And I hold them up. The desk wands probably aren't going to destroy the world, is what you think. But you don't have to tell him that. You can let um, him. It's delusion. Uh, what 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 would I roll? Because uh, because I think the idea of Bjorg rolling at this sounds fucking hilarious. Uh, we'll go. Let's see. These are not impossible to know about. Some of them aren't. So, um, you can go Arcana. History. <laughs> so far, nothing I have a bonus to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will go Arcana or History. Uh, history is more likely for Bjorg because he does know some stories. Okay. Uh, so let's roll that shit. <laughs> uh, the first one, you get a four. Roll for your second one. And so the third time, that is a four and a two. Okay. Uh you have no fucking idea. You have never seen nor heard of these before. Um, Fandango, I'm pretty sure those are sticks. Uh, Arrow, well, the, Arrow, the gods will, will will walk over. Let me let me take a look. I don't understand why you're looking at these things. They're sticks. Arcana or history, Arrow. Both, both are the same. We'll pick pick one and roll. Arca Arcana, natural twenty. All right. The so first the first one you definitely are gonna know. All right. Just kind of look at them and be like, you're both morons. <laughs> Second one. It's a stick. 
too. Yes, it's de- <laughs> clearly a stick. Um, Brandon Thymaster, do you want to take a swing at this? Yeah, I'll wander over. What are we doing, guys? Looking at things? Got sticks. Nice. These are rods that are going to destroy the world. No offending, go their sticks. We should point them at Klaus. <laughs> All right, Brandon, okay. you're going to go Arcana or History? Oh, we should save them for Silas. He's safe. You cannot, You really only have to roll on the second one because Rick has got the first. Oh, my God. I love it. All right, audience, remember, I gave them a chance to find out what this does. The dice did not want it to be so. Um, but Arrow of the Gods, the first one, the flat iron rod with the button, you recognize instantly... It is a great tool that is well-known among many criminals and um, builders alike. It is very useful, uh, but not not common, more uncommon, because it does require magic. Uh, it is an immovable rod. Uh, you can use an action to press the button, which causes the rod to become magically fixed in place. Until you or another creature uses an action to push the button again, the rod does not move, even if it is defying gravity. The rod can hold up to 8,000 pounds, but more weight will cause it to deactivate and fall, and a creature can use an action to make a DC 30 strength check to move the rod, the fixed rod up to 10 feet on a success. Uh, you got all that because of the natural 20. I asked Fandingo to see it. I hold, I hold it up, press the button in midair, and then kind of do a, and then kind of do a few uh, pull-ups. <laughs> Roll me a strength check. Let's see how impressive those are. 21. Man, you bang out some good-ass pull-ups. <laughs> the air of the gods is showing off. off. Sweet. Okay, Bjorg is also going to show off. By? Strength check, right? Also pull-ups. On what? Oh, wait. The rod using... is big enough for one hand. Well, yes, he's going to move the arrow of the gods off the rod. <laughs> 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 He's going to yeah, just shoulder yeah, check him off. Is he going with that? <laughs> uh, you know, something, sometimes you got to let the, you gotta let the, uh, the junior adventurers, uh, you know, have their moment in the sun. Oh, I'm going to kill you. So that, sound like, that sounds a lot like let the Wookiee win. <laughs> is, this, uh, so is this an athletics check for pull-ups? No, I made Rick do strength, so I'll say strength. Okay, strength. All right, cool. All right, Bjorg is going to roll for one-handed pull-ups. 21. Well, you do equally impressive pull-ups. Mm, they should have been more impressive. That was not yeah. that was not bad trying to uh, to ape, ape my form there. Well done, uh, well done, Junior Adventure. <laughs> well, not to be outdone, Fendingo's going to hold the other stick up in the air <laughs> and activate that wand. I don't have any idea how to actually activate the wand. I'm just going to hold it up in the air and let go. Just gonna lift and drop it. Yep. Okay, give me one sec. There's not a button on this one, right? It just swirlies. And the DM has to research how badly you fucked up. That's when just you know you're imagine in trouble. how bad it would be if I knew how to activate it. It's one of those ones with the retributive strike. You know, it's like 4D100. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna drop it. Ah, you know, technically that really shouldn't do anything, but this has been around for a while, um, and it could be fun. Let's see. Okay, yeah. John, roll a d10 and pick the number before you roll it. All right. What's the number? Seven. All right. Oh! Boom! Wow. Okay, it goes off. Uh, there was only a 10% shit. chance of that. Huh. Uh, let's see. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> now, you're all clustered up around there nicely. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and thus the adventure ends. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and play with a D6, because there is chance that it could shoot and not hit any of you. So we will say... One is good old uh, Fandingo for kicking this off. Two is Arrow of the Gods. Three is Bjorg. 
A uh, four is Brandon, and a five or a six is going to be a miss. And oh, I am going to Klaus? It. Uh, Klaus is passed out and over there. But if it is a miss one and it's an area effect, it might influence him. Five! Okay. And now, the last bit. Close, close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when the GM laughs, you're already fucked. Oh, well, this is going to be fun. I have to roll another D100. Uh-oh. Let's just say as soon as I saw this item, I knew it had to go into this party. 84. And... A rat appears. That's it? Where? That, that's it. A rat appears. It kind of looks around, scurries under the table. I pick the, wand, I pick the wand of whatever the fuck up and put it in my bag. <laughs> the wand of rat conjuring. <laughs> wand of create rat. Yeah, that's, that's useful. <sighs> oh, well. Um... Do you want to take your chin-up bar with us? Because I've got the keys. We can leave. We can do magical pull-ups, you know, anytime. And you can conjure rodents. Yeah. I can get us out of this room. Are we going to wait for your rats to, like, gnaw through the door or something? No, I have keys. Oh, well, that'll work, too. (laughs) I'm just guessing that the glowy key goes to the glowy lock. Go give it a try. I'm going to go over here and put the glowy key in the glowy lock. All right. Yeah, we're watching. <laughs> uh, you place the key into the lock. Uh, however, it will not turn. Hmm. I take out the feather thingy and brush it onto the thingy. Nope. All right. I put the other key in the glowy lock. Uh, this one does not fit in the uh, glowy lock. It doesn't even go in. Well, then I guess I'll read the goddamn instruction manual. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say you have a journal. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll look at the. F- I guess I'll read the fucking manual. <laughs> you begin to flip through the journal. Um, it is the recordings of Doctor Cornelius Fizzleboot Esquire the Third. All right. Hey guys, this stuff was written by a real douche. Uh, just a gnome. Same thing. Uh, Dr. Fizzleboot uh, came here. It looks like he was researching uh, the mysterious anomalies that had been happening around this island. Distortions of size and time and space um, occurring with frequency but regularity. Enough mm-hmm. that it got reported. Like, it was never frequent enough to be expected, but it kept happening enough that people paid attention. Um, And so as you're kind of reading through, um, I guess it sort of depends on how deeply do you want to read. Do you want to actually, like, dig into this, or do you want to just skim for anything that looks like password or how to open lock? I really kind of just want to... magic spell for lock. Or how to get the fuck out of this room. Right. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm doing. All right. Uh, You are skimming, you are skimming, you are skimming. You go past all of the extra stuff, um, and then you get to the end. And the writing is still in the same general handwriting, but the scrawl has become more ragged and illegible. And And it says, the others are gone. Call has grown too strong. I can no longer resist. I can no longer fight. The time has come to wade into the peace of the waters and serve my master. And then um, at the bottom is just the word obedience. Looks like it's been written over and over and over onto that page. The exact same, like etched into it. Maybe this guy was a follower of God I cannot pronounce. (laughs) Hmm. All right. I look at the. Lock and say obedience. Okay. You have said obedience to the lock. I might remind you, you do not have the key in the lock at the moment. You have no, taken I'll it put out. The key, put the key in the lock and say obedience. All right. Uh, you definitely feel a surge of magical energy as it uh, kind of clicks 
and you find you are able to turn the key if you would like. All right, I figured out how to open it. Bjork, get over here. Might might need some killing. Wait, before we leave, I've noticed something. What? This sword that I put on the table is now ten minutes older. <laughs> but oh God, he's right. But the mist. But you. But you know what the nefarious part is? We've only been here for nine minutes. Da na na, da na na. Oh, we're on Sports Center. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I was trying to think of a good horror stinger, and that was all that jumped to mind. And all we got was Sports Center. Yep. <laughs> King James, going to L.A. All right. You guys want to – you think I should open the door? Yeah. All right. Can you have... I'll open the door. Know. All right. You open the door. Roll me initiative – perceptions. Roll me perceptions. Uh, also, who has low light and or dark vision? Uh, Fandango has low light. Or I, I'm a half elf. I have something. Well, you have a natural one, so not super uh, relevant. So I don't see a goddamn thing. Yeah. Brandon Firemaster rolls a 24. You can see the darkness quite clearly. Arrow of the Gods gets a natural 20. But I don't think, do any of you have low light or dark vision aside from Fandango who rolled a natural one? Nope, nope, nope. Nah, yeah, I think it's human down the line. Klaus, maybe? Yeah, Klaus is human or half elf? Klaus, yeah. Klaus is half elf. Um, okay, so you can all see um, some because there is light in this room and it does cast down into the other room as you open the door. You see more rough stone. Uh, up to this point, you know, you had your. Uh, your descent into the chamber and then the fall all the way down. Um, everything has been really nice and like etched and careful. Um, this whole place has a very strong sense of having been built, but the rough like digging and, and natural sort of formation of the rocks make it feel like this tunnel probably wasn't um, made by humans or humanoids. Like this was made by nature or something much older um, it kind of runs at a at a jagged angle deep down, um, so all you can see is just a slope and rough stone, and then darkness as your light runs out. Well, Fand- Fandingo. Yeah. Well, hold on, Fand- Fandingo. Didn't I seem to recall you casting like dancing lights or something that helped us one time when we were in the dark? Yeah. Yeah, I can cast light. On what? <laughs> oh, you mean down there? I have to see how the light spell works in this universe. While he's doing that, I'd like to utilize my uh, glowstone that is still sewn into my crotch. Okay. That emits light? Uh, yeah, it emits light. Uh, hmm. Now, how did you activate it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, Fandango's figured it out, so he's going to go get a helmet off one of these suits of armor, cast light on it, and throw it through the door. Okay. Uh, the helmet bounces down... Um, remember the hallway kind of zigzags a little, so it doesn't go super far before it ends up hitting an obstruction, but, um, it definitely casts more light and you can see more rough stone as just the tunnel goes deeper, further down. By the way, the helmet's glowing purple. Cool. It looks creepy as shit. I got that, Fandinga. I see what you're doing here. Meanwhile, Brandon Firemaster is shouting very variations of Illuminate at his dick. Uh, his dick lights up. Yes. Huh. Wait, what? Well, the stone on top of his dick lights up. Oh. Yeah, Fendinko will move away from the glowy penis. I'll lead the way, guys. Brandon, with your dick so bright, won't you guide our way tonight? <laughs> Not for um, nothing, and you know I don't I don't want to spoil a good party. But there's another door that might not lead down to the creepy hell pit. Yeah, what's what? So, sorry, refresh for me. I was doing live blog. What's what's in what's in this pit? It's like creepy. There's no pit. It's just a tunnel going down. It's just mm. a stone tunnel. But it doesn't look all cool and man made and snazzy and shit. And Home Slice wrote about. Others gone, must 
serve his master. Was he literally shoving people down there? I don't know. Is this a sacrificed vagina? Um, I don't even know how to respond to that. (laughs) It's going to be some kind of weird gnome S&M dungeon. (laughs) Yep, slamming the door. Do you want to take your glowy dick into the S&M dungeon? Because my not glowy dick does not want to go into the gnome S&M dungeon. You make a good point. We can see what's behind door number two. I'm okay with checking out the dungeon. I'm already wearing a mask. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so that's one for gnome sex dungeon, two for no gnome sex dungeon, and Bjork hasn't really weighed in on the gnome sex dungeon yet. We really give him his fanfic artist some bait. (laughs) Uh, I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the Klaus Silas slash fic. Is the other is the other door open? It will be in a second. I have two keys. Well, fucking open it and we can see. Okay, I'll fucking open it. Uh, make an informed decision. I don't know. I mean, it could be worse than the gnome sex dungeon. Could be ogre sex dungeon. <laughs> you know, so often I would say what's going to be worse than a than a gnome sex dungeon, but I'm afraid that Drew would tell me. So yeah, Fending will use the non glowy key and the non glowy door. It non-glowy turns, and you have unlocked the door. I'll open it. Uh, you open the door to a uh, another smooth hallway, much like in the style that you've seen of this whole place so far. Um, it goes straight forward and then takes a left. This does not look like a gnome sex dungeon or a sacrifice vagina. Uh, wait, is this up to me? Pretty much. Who's voted what so far? I'm sorry, I can't think. Arrow the Gods voted yes to Gnome Sex Dungeon. Mm. Brandon of the Glowing Dick and Fandingo voted no to the Sex Dungeon. Presumed Sex Dungeon. Right. We are looking at, like, two... identical tunnels here either which could be some kind of sex dungeon is that are they identical or is one they are not oh one is natural looking like it it uh was formed either by weather or like a old creature or shift or whatever like it looks like a tunnel that has existed within this island um for who knows how long the rest of this place all has the look of like uh, carefully placed stone, smooth tunnels, like they someone built the rest of this. Um, and the the sec the non magical door has the same quality of construction. It 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 matches everything else you've seen so far since you went into the hatch by the statue. Um, the door that was m- magically locked does not match. It is the one that looks different, um, and the tunnel is very clearly not man-made so one is a naturally forming sex dungeon and the other a purpose-built sex dungeon yes think... that is the logical conclusion okay bjorg huh. this this way to the dungeon lies adventure oh <laughs> my one weakness bjorg will immediately head down that tunnel <laughs> well fandingo will close and lock the door that we're obviously not going to go through so that random gnome sex dungeon fiends can't come up behind us and follow Bjorg. Cool. Down the hole we go. Um, so you all are going to begin going down the tunnel. Um, Fendingo, how long does your light last? My light lasts for an hour. Okay. Um, and Brandon Thymaster, how long does your crotch light last don't think we were told so i guess it just uh dies whenever you think it's appropriate for it to die uh it's a glowstone so i'll just i'll just look it up real quick it lasts more than four hours you should seek medical attention (laughs) (laughs) and as the only one with healing magic here no (laughs) 
If Silas were here, I would tell him that he could lay on hands on your glowing junk. But I'm not curing that. Probably just as well. Ah, okay. I'm not sure what a glowstone was or if it was like a different system, but what you have is a gem of brightness. Fancy. Yes. Uh, Well, maybe not, actually. That's a little too powerful. Yeah, you got the shitty version. But the good news is I'll treat it like it's a uh, gem of brightness with just the first command option. So it's a 30-foot radius and dim light for an additional 30. Um, But it does not uh, run out. You can turn it on and off, but it takes an action to turn on and off. So basically, you could hip thrust repeatedly, making it flash like a traffic light. Yeah, I was going to say, what is the action? <laughs> uh, <sighs> clap on, clap off. <laughs> I knew a, I, I once, I once knew a guy in high school who came to a school dance with a, uh, a flashing bicycle light uh, on his crotch. Nice. Was his name also Brandon? No, his name was Derek. Uh, that sounds like a Derek move. I buy it that. Does. <laughs> mm. Nice one, Derek. Um, okay. So as y'all are descending the tunnel, um, the light you've got plenty of light, so you don't really have to worry about that. It's it's steep in some parts, slick in some parts. It's very kind of unnatural. Um, but as you're going, you kind of come along, and then you reach after let's say about 20 minutes. Um, you kind of reach, like, a plateaued part. You see another doorway. This one doesn't actually have another door, but what it does have are a shitload of runes and wards and magical stuff um, kind of surrounding the next part to step through. Uh, They are glowing with, like, flickers of energy running through them, very clearly active. Since I picked up the hat, the helmet that was glowing as we walked past, because otherwise I'd be leaving our light around beside behind us, I'll throw the hat over towards the doorway. Okay. The hat goes through the door without issue. Lands on the other side, clanks a few times. That's it. If you would like that shit's obviously just for show, guys. Right. But you are a spellcaster, so I'm guessing you have knowledge arcana. Oh, yeah. All right, and uh, Arrow of the Gods? I was actually just going to march right through. <laughs> oh, do you have Knowledge Arcana? Do you have Arcana? Nope. Okay. Uh, then Fandingo, roll and see if you can figure anything out about this. Uh, Fandingo rolled a 12. Okay, so here is a thing in 5e that I'm going to kind of tell you about. Um, if they're in the older systems... Uh, you could do a thing where it was called taking 20, where you spent a lot of time doing it. Um, they don't as much have that in 5e, but they do have is if you're willing to take a long time to study something, like 10 minutes or whatever, like however long the task demands, you can roll with advantage. I'll take the time. Very good. I mentioned that because your advantage was extra good. It was a nat 20. Yeah, my advantage yeah. was a nat 20. But that is a mechanic you guys need to know about. So yeah, okay. I'm Good. Bringing it up now. Um, uh, Fen- Fendingo, Fendingo will take some extra time, and he rolls a 20 on his knowledge, a natural 20 on his knowledge arcana check. I'm not giving you true nat 20 on that one because we fudged it a little bit, but I am <laughs> definitely going to give you a pass. <laughs> okay. Uh, you kind of look this over. This shit is way above your pay grade. There's a lot of deeply complex magic going on here. In the door? Yeah, all, all okay. the stuff that's around the doorway. But what you what you generally can get from it is that it's definitely meant um, as sort of a block barrier containment thing. But it's not. But none of it is pointed to stop things from getting in. Huh. Hey guys, whatever's in there is a bad mother. Which means that us as heroes, we should destroy it. Speak um, for your goddamn self. I am a rock star, not a hero. I, I hold on a moment. Um, how 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 powerful? All right. So think of like the biggest, nastiest ice troll that you right. ever saw. 
I am thinking of it. Okay. Now think of something that would floss its fucking teeth with that ice troll. Bjorg's eyes roll back in his head, and he just <laughs> makes this disturbingly pleasured sound. Now think of that thing fucking you. <laughs> Bjorg pauses, contemplates this, and says, "With you know, you're not entirely sure how whether or not irony is intended at all at, at all here." He goes, "Not if I fuck it first. Arrow, the gods looks at looks at Bjorg. Bjorg, are we doing this? I, I, I need, no. to, need to protect companions. No. Need to destroy big thing. Brandon, need to protect companions. Um, big okay, evil Fandingo, thing. give yeah. me an intelligence check." <laughs> And boy, <laughs> don't shit the bet on this one, because uh, you're about the only <laughs> one who can make it. Fendingo rolls a 20 on his intelligence check. Yeah. Not natural. <laughs> Not natural, but uh, we'll but take it. Yeah, that, that is good. That was a good one not to fail. Um, <laughs> Fendingo... You remember, like, as you were skimming through that book, there was a lot more information about the guy who lived in the room right up fucking stairs of this place. Um, so there very well might be a way to get some hints as to what lay beyond there without having to set foot in and find out firsthand. Hey, guys, follow follow me, and we can find a better way to fight the bad thing and maybe not die, and then we can come back later and fight it, I promise. Very well, Fendigo, I believe you. Bjorg will follow Fandango. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the arrow of the gods will turn to follow too, but before he does, he will fire one arrow through that doorway just to see what happens. Uh, you have shot an arrow through a doorway. You are down one arrow. Okay. Drums in the deep. Fandango <laughs> runs back up that tunnel like a motherfucker. Bjorg will follow Fandigo, going, I am very glad that you were in such a hurry to figure out how to defeat this thing. That's exactly what I'm doing. Good. All right. Arrow the gods are like, yeah, there's more where that came from, and then he'll follow them up. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow around. I think we taught that door a valuable lesson. <laughs> Is he running back up the stairs with his glowing crotch light? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I uh, I wasn't going to stop you guys because you get to make your own choices as characters, but I just wanted to give you one one thing before you really bit something off. Uh, yeah. Not all of us were going through that door, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> one of us was going to leave you fuckers behind, leave you fuckers to your own devices. Uh, you can do as you like. I'm just I'm giving you the hint checks. Actually, 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 before I come up... Um, there is one thing I totally, um, it works within to 60 feet, but, uh, does my divine sense, uh, sense any fiends or, or anything, uh, beyond that doorway? You need line of sight, oh. uh, to find them. And so, no, you, you're not getting anything in the small window that you can see. That's probably, that's probably good. Cause if I did, if I did sense something, there's no way I could come up. <laughs> Fentingo's going to lock the door and put the key in his bag of holding. All right. Um, you are back in the study room with the destroyed items and the looted desk. Uh, all right, guys. Can we chill for a few minutes? I think I might need to read more of this book. <sighs> you can do push-ups or something. It'll be fine. Yay. Is the immovable rod still there? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys okay. not want to take the immovable rod with you? Yeah. And Bjorg is gonna give me give me another strength <laughs> check because Bjorg is gonna. Bjorg, I'm gonna do another strength check because Bjorg is gonna do and it pull ups. <laughs> Bjorg rolls a six. Ooh, Bjorg. Bjorg, uh, Bjorg, Bjorg kind of struggles, struggles on this one. one. Uh, he, uh, no. he barely gets the chin over and then kind of. Loses his grip up slightly. Arrow, yeah. arrow of the gods will walk up, clap Bjorg on the shoulder, and be like. Let me show you true strength. And he will reach up, grab the bar, and then click the button and just pull the whole bar down. <laughs> Bjorg is going to stare at the arrow of the gods and go, I didn't think it was possible for me to dislike someone more than Silas. <laughs> Deep shit. 
Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Fandango's reading a book. All right. Uh, Fandango, you read the tale of Dr. Cornelius Fizzleboot, a brilliant no mage slash experimenter slash alchemist slash scientist, a man who sought knowledge in every form and facet that he could find and could never turn down a mystery. This is only one of his journals, the journal of his final adventure. He uh, came to this island to study the strange magical fields and effects that occur here, seemingly without cause at times. As he kind of did more research into it, he, um, uh, he brought in other mages. He found that the island was really rich in mana. It supported a ton of magic. There were interesting effects that could be achieved. And he basically built a research outpost. Um, as you keep flipping through, uh, you find that, that during the construction of the facility that you're now in, uh, they uncovered a tunnel that went deeper, one that they hadn't dug. Uh, upon exploration, they kind of broke through some walls into some caverns um, and located an enormous underground lake. Uh, from that point on, things began to change dramatically. There were people who would go missing suddenly. There were um, people who would be talking in strange voices to people who weren't there. It became crazy, and people began dropping like flies. Um, eventually, you know, the gnomes weren't stupid. They, they put together that they had kind of cracked into something, um, although they hadn't been able to find out what yet. Um, so they layered tons and tons and tons of magic and seals on the um, entryways to try and keep it out. But the damage appears to be done. And as you read, you find that the general madness kept on spreading and reaching more and more of them and vanishing until you eventually reach his final entry in which Cornelius Fizzleboot writes the word obedience over and over. <laughs> Please, these people know nothing about what true madness is. Now, here is the tricky part. I'm going to give you one shot to try, and uh, obviously I know you guys don't know this, but I'm going to give you one roll to try and put together what it might be based on those clues and descriptions. The DC is 20. Uh, you can roll me a knowledge can we assist uh, each other not on this okay. there's not really a way to assist remembering something i will give you knowledge history knowledge nature and knowledge religion you can only pick one um so pick whichever one of those is your best and give me a roll there's those are three different avenues to know this well, so is nature, is 20 you can go nature Religion or history, you have to hit twenty. Um, I you can only roll I, one. And we look at, I don't think we I, get one each or one for the group. No, you get one each. Oh, okay. Well, you got to okay. your best skill and go because you don't get to roll well, all three. I, well, I got a twenty. I got a zero on all of them. So, oh. nope, I didn't make it. <laughs> okay. All right, five. Uh, York, do you have any of those trained? No, it's Correct. it's history. It's history, religion, or what else? Nature. Nature. Nature, history, religion, or nature? Uh, I don't. Uh, with my old sheet, I had nature. I had some knowledge nature, but uh, no, I had survival. I had survival with my old character. Brandon, do you have any of those trained? Uh, no, not officially. <clears throat> I can only really roll a knowledge nature um, or something similar whilst punching something. So, Fjord, <laughs> yeah. I, I know that you know this. I mm. know that you know more about nature than anybody. So I'm going to give you a bardic inspiration. All right. So you can add a D6 to one ability check within the next 10 minutes. All right. So I will roll nature. Here we go. Hitting the Never button. mind. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's that's a no-go. All right. Then he's going to roll a knowledge history. No good. Fendingo rolls a 17. All right. Brandon, you do still get a roll. I would say you can do religion as a monk. I mean, I'm not making you be trained in any of these. I'm just letting you pick the one that's most advantageous to you. All right. In that case, 
Let me see. Yeah, they all work about. I'm equally ignorant in all of these things. So. <laughs> Roll oh, the <laughs> Well, hey, we're okay. Um, so nobody, nobody gets it. But Fandingo with a 17. This, this definitely is itching something in your head. Uh, an old legend, an old tale. Some oh, it's 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 there, but you just can't get it. Um, but the one thing you do remember is dangerous. This reminds me of a legend I heard while I was running past a church in a small town. Pursued by an angry father, three brothers, and two cousins after a completely consensual liaison between two (laughs) consenting adults. But nonetheless, her dad, brother, and cousins were really angry. Oh, and her fiancé might have been chasing me, too. This is sounding more and more questionable. No, don't remember it. (laughs) Sorry. Okay, so whatever's down there, at one point you fucked. <laughs> I think I think at one point I fucked its daughter. <laughs> um, well, that well, doesn't narrow it down, Vandinga. I know, another... I know, I know. We're not. There's no way we could figure this out. This is bothering me. Well, the there's thing on dealt with is bothering me. We can go to the other places in the research facility. Mm, I think maybe we should do that. All right. No, but it is I'm facing. But first, I'm thinking that since we almost got killed by um, cutlery and a rug, I'm out of spells and I'm going to need to sleep before I can get spells again. Not a bad idea. Where can we go to sleep? Oh, I'm going to ball up the remnants of the rug and take a nap. I mean, you're behind a statue entrance, down a, you know, endless fall, in a room with locked doors, and you've killed everything in here that tried to kill you. This is probably as good of a napping spot as you could hope for. That's kind of what I figured. All right, I will take first watch. All right, Hour of the Gods will take second watch. Friend of Fire Master will take third watch. And Klaus will take everyone's watch when you're not looking. Although, although, just for, although, just for record, Brandon, when you finally wake up, the Arrow of the Gods is nowhere to be seen, but Silas is back. Ah, bulls. Oh, what a terrible twist. <laughs> Jesus, that's awful. I know. But that is where we will hang off for the game tonight. Uh, we'll let you guys get a long rest in. Bevan can wake up, hopefully. He won't be uh, traveling. Uh, however, we are not done. As you all know, we do take questions during our live blog, which we do on Facebook.com slash Authors and Dragons. So we take your questions, and sometimes we feel like answering them, and we do. And sometimes we feel like answering them, and we don't, because self-denial is often the best kind of denial. Anyway, Joe, you're up. All right, so our friend Simon says, what is your ideal hamburger, and what would your character's ideal hamburger be as well? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say that Bjorg is probably like a Baconator guy. Like, not because I necessarily like Baconators, but because he seems like the type of person who would see a hamburger made of bacon, you know, on top of beef and cheese and go, oh my god, I have to eat 20 of those. Um, I'm more of a, I'm honestly more of a BLT guy than a burger guy. But also mushrooms. Mushrooms are good. Because I feel like Gunther would definitely have mushrooms on his burger. And yeah. <laughs> not that probably like a weed mayonnaise too or something i mean Just cannabis sauce and free lsd buttons. sprinkles now for my own thing i'll tell you this i love a pretty classic hamburger bun lettuce tomato sauce uh yeah, i love i love a good caramelized onion but the real trick to me homemade bread mm. you can't fucking touch a real home cooked or like freshly baked bun when you go to a restaurant and they have them Holy shit, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, it does. I'm all about some onion straws on a regular burger. Just mustard, ketchup, pepper jack, bacon, onion straws, maybe a little bit of A1. Yeah. Oh, dude, you'd love the Whiskey River Barbecue Burger at uh, Red Robin. 
Oh, that I is actually, good. Yeah. they have a burger there. That they have a A1. They have an A1 peppercorn burger that I love. God, Red Robin has good fucking burgers. They do, man. I For want a Red Robin. Joint? Oh, no kidding. Like, I mean, you can find better, but it's like a Texas Roadhouse steak. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely better steaks out there, but not for this price and consistency. Right. And as much as I fucking travel, consistency is really important. Yeah, Knowing that it's not going to kill me. We should introduce Steve to Red Robin at some point. <laughs> That's oh, man. way nicer. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm not to shit your pants, but in a good way. <laughs> I think Brandon would, uh, I guess, have some kind of variation on the double down, which is just chicken breast in between two other chicken breasts. Um, for me, I, know, I just I don't like to overcomplicate burgers. I just like to get a really nice burger, put some cheese on it and a bit of ketchup in a brioche bun. And then, uh, you know, not mess around. I went through a phase of. I see how many mushrooms and things I can put on this. See if I can put other meals within the burger. <laughs> but then I learned that, um, you know, sometimes a burger is best when it's just a burger. You know, I've actually learned belatedly, like I, I'd held off on this for years, but I've discovered that a fried egg on a burger can be really good. Uh, you, you, oh, did, you, did, you just took exactly what I was going to say because I was going to oh, say, okay, sorry. I was going to say, my my ideal is like yeah, a cheeseburger grilled in, in a back a backyard. With a fresh fried egg, I got it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Si- Sil- Silas, on the other hand, Silas would be a cold lump of Toreg shit, you know, between two rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a place in Lubbock called Burgers, Fries, and Cherry Pies, and their burgers were exactly as good as you expect from a place with that name, and they did a fried egg burger that I still think about. My wife, my wife, she she keeps uh, raving about. Last time she she went down to Houston or so, she stopped in some place, and she said they had a burger. It was called it was a burger with what she they called redneck cheddar, which she still really cannot describe to me, and a fried <laughs> egg on it. But she said whatever it was, it was awesome. The fuck is redneck cheddar? I have no fucking idea. So lis- listener, it- listeners, if you know what redneck cheddar is. And, and dear God, I know I'm I know I'm asking for some horrors from this, but let us know. <laughs> I grew up in the fucking boonies, and I have never heard of redneck. Ch- Is it just Wolf Brand chili and cheddar? Because that I, would that would be the most honest one. I have no idea. I mean that I, I, I am a redneck, and I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, I know I don't know. Wolf Brand chili could run for fucking mayor down here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, next question. Yeah, yeah, I think okay, we've yeah. gotten a lot out of the burger one. All right. So our friend Michael says, when will you lads venture to the UK? I'm assuming he means UK because he posted a British flag. He might mean when are you guys going to ingest British flags, but I don't know. Um, I don't know, and Thursday, respectively. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, in America, we just got done doing that. <laughs> <laughs> always wondered what that holiday was about yeah we eat british flags and then we poop the union jack <laughs> uh my response to that question is when are you going to get a con together to invite us over yeah uh a and d does england has a certain ring to it yeah yeah we're down for it it's not our willingness that is ever an issue <laughs> it's how many cons are willing to uh, have us yeah I mean I'm in England all the time obviously but I don't think I can sustain an entire con attraction by myself so uh, yeah I, you, I, you know something I've seen you at cons and I would disagree I want to see you do <laughs> yeah. like Eddie Murphy nutty professor but you're all of us <laughs> honestly I was thinking like have Steve cosplay but the cosplay is literally just him carting around a bunch of monitors with our faces on it. <laughs> yeah, I'd be so sort of like, is this a one man show or or is this homeless man having a mental breakdown? <laughs> We're all trapped inside these televisions. <laughs> Let us Yeah, there you go. The end of the end of the podcast is Steve wakes up. It was all a dream. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> 
<laughs> Why did I dream those first few episodes where I wasn't around? <laughs> what does that say oh, about me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our friend Jeff says, if you had to have an uncontrollable superpower, what would you choose? I think that uncontrollable is... I guess it makes us get creative. Yeah. So, an always-on superpower. Yeah, I guess it would be always-on. That actually cancels out a lot of things, like, you know, who would want magnetism if it meant that metal things were going to hit you in the head all day? I yeah, that's a, that's a tougher one. I, like, I, super I, strength, you'd kill a cat every time you pet it, and other things. I don't know. I mean, the uncontrollable power to make people throw their money at me whenever I walked past doesn't sound too bad. I don't know. What if you go to a place that's like got a heavy coin income? You keep uncontro- you keep uncontrollably growing dicks from random parts of your body. <laughs> but I would assume that, like, as a controllable power, growing a dick would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that'd be useful if you didn't have a dick and you just kind of wanted one. But you know. If you already have a dick, that's not that's not a good super power to have. Yeah, I was going to say that, that, that that's the guy that makes like Aquaman feel useful. <laughs> I mean, if Cyclops taught us nothing, it's that permanent laser eyes are not great. Yeah, might have taught us see. about turning gold. Uh, if I had to have one, huh? I'm um, you know what? Vulnerability. Okay. Vulnerability would be nice. Yeah. Unreliable, though. Really? No, it's uncontrollable. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm in Vern. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I think I think like uncontrollable invisibility would be entertaining. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna I'm gonna sort of come up with one of those things that's gonna seem like a bullshit cheat, but I'm gonna say perfect balance. No? Uncontrollable perfect balance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like like even when I fall down, I I compulsively straighten back up. Yeah, we got to kind of delineate, but is it always on or is it off and on? <laughs> yeah, that's that, 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 I don't know. Yeah. What do we want to go with? What's what's funnier? All right, if it's always on, I'll say invulnerability. We'll just do both. But yeah, fun. okay. More fun. If if it's always on, invulnerability. If it's on and off, oh, Jesus. Um, God, on and off. What would be really funny if it was on and off? Um, compulsive hydrokinesis. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to make toilets spray at people. I can't control it. Everything's a bidet. If it was always on, I'd probably just go for that dick grown thing. <laughs> <goes on. laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's doctor makes people's heads randomly explode. <laughs> uh, off and on, I would go with a luck power of some kind. Pick a superhero or background uh but one that only worked in the positive direction so just every now and then uh everything works in my favor beware it's captain congress killer yeah it's like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> like uh, be a superhero but you know you can uh <laughs> make a little money have a good laugh all right let's see here next question um trying to get some 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 good ones here uh okay so our friend uh Shlomi, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, uh, she says, uh, do you guys like kung fu movies, uh, funny slash and or real ones? Yes. I feel like Mimic just answers that question for yeah. us. Fuck yeah. Uh, I will say that my favorite kung fu movie of all time is House of Flying Daggers. That's a nice one, yeah. Mine is, uh, and it may be one I, I recommend for either a... Um, a riff tracks style watch along or a movie discussion is Twin Warriors with Jet Li. It's okay. uh, very silly, but it's actually got a lot of cool martial arts in it. But it's Jet Li. I, I would say one of my favorites, and it is the, the classic, like, you know, three quarters of the movie is just training sequence, Master Killer, which is also known as the 36 Chamber of, Sha- of Shaolin or whatever. Mm. Oh, if we're doing, also, if we're doing, like, um, straight up, like, brutal realism kung fu movies, The Raid is great. Oh, yeah. Oh, the raid kicks ass. Uh, yeah. If we're doing, like, classic ones, Drunken Master, the Jackie Chan oh, has always been a personal Drunken favorite. Drunken Master's great. Uh, if we're going to go old school, Ender the Dragon. And the Dragon's very cool. Mm. Like the Dragon's great. Flying Guillotine. <laughs> uh, it's a terrible movie, but I still love it. 
both for fight scenes and for just it's it's the good kind of shitty. The one with Jet Li. Mm. <laughs> that was well, I Actually, I'll, I'll add one more, and I guess it's so, yeah, I, I, it's kung fu, but it's just over the top. The story of Ricky. <laughs> that is over the top. Yeah. For like, for like, really shitty, uh, um, like '90s nostalgia movies, um, Surf Ninjas. Oh God! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> oh, I've managed to forget that existed until right now. Rob Schneider. As we know, money can't buy knives. <laughs> I'm the chosen that, one. <laughs> no, this is you're just you're just here. This is an unusual um, pick, but uh, one of my favorite kung fu movies. It's not, uh, I suppose, technically a kung fu movie. Is a uh, Scott Pilgrim, the Edgar Wright movie. Oh Edgar yeah. Wright. Oh yeah, that's a oh, that's a good one. Somehow Edgar turning, Wright knows a fight scene. Tur- somehow turning everyone into coins managed to make that movie look gorier than. <laughs> Than all of like the blood and guts movies out there. Yeah, I, I was a, I was familiar with the Scott Pilgrim comics before I saw that movie, and I watched it, and I was just sitting here going, "This is the greatest thing I have ever seen." I fucking love that movie. <laughs> all right, oh, but I I just realized okay. something about um fucking Rob Schneider's character in Surf Ninjas. Uh-huh. He was actually a lot more complex satire than I realized as a kid, because he's just the the white guy friend who is constantly assuming the movie is about him. Even yeah, though it yeah. makes no goddamn sense why it would be. <laughs> Just yeah. like most Rob Schneider movies. Yeah. <laughs> He's literally playing on the old uh, Tom Cruise Last Samurai trope. Surf Ninjas <laughs> should act, should should actually be a... Oh, yeah, and the, the, that was my favorite joke for me. It's like, you know, how, how did you get out? We give you a handcuff. I swallowed it, Key. <laughs> <laughs> how did you know? I swallowed it last Tuesday. How did you know? I swallow it every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> that's I a, want to watch Surf Ninjas now. That's a Mimic Chest movie. Mm. All right. Uh, next question? or Yeah, next yeah. question. All right. So uh, our friend Ryan asks, oh. what author inspired your writing the most? And he wants to know, can I get a fuck you as well? No, Ryan, you cannot get a fuck you. Those are special, you anal buttwort. Well, he did say please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said please? Well, then... Um, fuck no. you. No. Oh, damn it. I have betrayed <laughs> I must go slap myself. Not fuck you, Ryan. I have taken it back. No, Ryan, we're going to treat you re- with respect. <laughs> yeah, see how you like that. <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, was, uh, sorry, what writer inspired your writing the most? I don't know. Which one says fuck the most? <laughs> Bevan? <laughs> uh, Let's see. Uh, okay, so I can pull a couple out um, just because they're ones that I keep going back to. To like for me, like you know, what what makes a writer inspiring to a lot of is like, do I find myself constantly looking back at that that thing and going, oh th- yeah, that's that's my standard. Um, and those are probably Glenn Cook is definitely one of them. Um, uh, and um, Matthew Stover is another one I really like. Like he 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 does like mythic cadence, really awesome. Uh, and probably George R. R. Martin because he blew yeah. my mind on eighteen. So my funny Glenn Cook story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course you have one. <laughs> <laughs> right, so when I when I first started doing the con circuit, I was doing a lot of conventions in Tennessee and Kentucky and around that part of the world. And there was this one bookseller who was always at a bunch of those conventions. And I was at Mid South Con one year, and I was I had a table in the dealer room, and I was flipping through the program, and I saw that Glenn Cook was there, and they had his picture, and I was like, wait a minute. And I looked over, and I and I had noticed that this bookseller had always had a shitload of Glenn Cook titles. And I was like, wow, I haven't noticed that this is a very Glenn Cook crowd at all these shows. This guy must really just be a fan. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Glenn Cook is the bookseller that does a lot of those Tennessee and Kentucky science fiction and fantasy cons. I just didn't recognize him until (laughs) I'd been buying books from him for three years. And then I bought one of his, finally. (laughs) Oh, 
because he didn't have his last name on his badge. <laughs> that's my excuse. Hi, I'm no, just random fair. Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> just it's Glenn. like when my friend, when David Coe brought over a buddy to sit and have drinks with us in the bar at Dragon Con one night. He said, this is my friend Rob, this is his wife. And we sit and we chat and he hang out for about half an hour. And then Rob's like, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to bed. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And then his name badge finally flips over. And as he leaves, I lean over to David and say, so I understand that you've known him for 20 years, but I wanted to know ahead of time if I was going to spend the next half hour having drinks with Robert J. Sawyer. Yeah. For the record, Rob is amazing and awesome and very and so Canadian nice that he doesn't he didn't expect me to know who he was other than this friend of David's. So I was only moderately embarrassed. But yeah, Uh, for me, it's a blend of David Eddings and Tad Williams and Ray Feist. Mm -hmm. Those three really and none of them say fuck in their writing. Yeah, t- t- no, Tad Williams was a huge influence for me, too. Yeah. yeah, I love that style of adventure fantasy. And even though most of what I write is urban or horror comedy, that's that's the stuff that I really want to put out in the world. And that's why I did Queen of Cats last year or last year, this year. That's why I finally released Queen of Cats, because that's the kind of shit that I loved reading when I was young. The kind of daring hero against all odds and chosen one hero's journey stuff. I love that shit. Yeah, I think that I is think, solid. I think my list is a little, little simpler. I mean, you know, I mean, I grew, I grew up. I mean, you know, like re- reading like you know Stephen King, you know P- Peter David. Uh, to a lesser degree, like, you know, Douglas Preston, Lincoln Child. And I think they, they all had that, that, ins- that inspiration because, like, you know, I just love their stories. Um, yeah. But, I mean, as far – if I had – I know I've, I've been saying it for years, but probably, like, you know, the writer who had the biggest influence on me wasn't so much a novelist, but it was uh, Sean Baby from SeanBaby.com and also – and later Cracked. Just because mm-hmm. this, this was a guy who could just take any subject and just kick you in the face with fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I just, that. and I just, I just loved. I, I used to like. I used to just live on his website, um, and I, and I know the whole portal of evil that, like, you know, he was part of. There was just, there was just like so much wrong there, but it was just funny wrong. Like, well, like, what, like, what, what was one of his websites? Fat chicks and party hats. There, there, there is no oh, way that there is, there is no way that like that website would exist today without being firebombed. But goddamn, it was funny as fuck. <laughs> I remember him from uh, Cracked, and I do remember those were. He was a funny goddamn article writer. Chris, Christopher Moore is another one. I was about to say if if I'm gonna go through the ones who are like inspirational in the way that I aspire to be like them and like produce the style and quality, um, Neil Gaiman, Christopher Moore, like those are are big. Uh, benchmarks I'm, I'm, you know, aspiring toward. Um, but in terms of who I read the most um, and in the way that they impacted my writing style the most, uh, it's actually a young adult author named Gordon Corman um, who writes for Scholastic and does a, a bunch of, of weird uh, interesting books, and I, I read them like all through childhood, up into my teenage years, even then. And for me, he sort of set the idea of what a good novel was because he could do comedy and humor, or comedy and drama, um, like intertwined in the same scene. Um, and he rooted his characters so well; they were always so interestingly insane that I, I just loved them. And I think. If I if I've aped anyone's style, it's, I definitely took some lessons from him. Yeah, I think my main influence is no one will be surprised to hear me say Terry Pratchett again, but uh, also a uh, Grant Naylor, which is Rob Grant and Doug Naylor. They were the duo behind the Red Dwarf TV series, and uh, the actual novel adaptations of that series are really good. And what they have in common with Pratchett and the thing that 
really sort of stuck with me and shaped my approach to narrative comedy is they can do pretty intriguing world building and character building while just entirely taking the piss. They can write three pages of something that's very funny, but will also kind of immerse you in a, a fantasy or science fiction world. So, yeah, those guys. All right, well, that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Uh, thank you all for putting in questions. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we will be back in two weeks with another episode of Authors and Dragons. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. Dragons. Oh, a Is this a sacrifice to vagina? <laughs>